Hello, this is Mike Swanson, and you're listening to the Wall Street Window Podcast. Usually I uh, speak with a guest on the show, but today I just want to talk uh, with you, myself, uh, about what's going on in the financial markets and this news event of the past week of the Trump uh, missile strike against the Iranian general that he killed and the growing tensions with Iran, uh, because this is dominating everyone's mind right now. And on Friday, the price of oil went up, the price of gold went up, and this is all over social media. In fact, it's Tuesday, January the 7th, and before doing this recording, I load up my personal Facebook page, and I saw about five people that I know uh, posting about this. Uh, hungry, uh, some of them, for another strike, uh, looking forward to a big bombing campaign against Iran, hoping it'll really wipe out some people there. While another person gets mad about that post, and another person gets scared that World War III is coming. Well, I want to try to calm you down and suggest that you should not think that this news event is having a giant impact at all on the financial markets. In fact, if you look at the S&P 500, it really has not reacted at all to the news event. I mean, it went down not even a percent on Friday, and it got down Monday and kind of went back up. Uh, If we're on the verge of catastrophe, uh, then the stock markets would be declining. And it's not just the United States. This is basically what most stock markets around the entire world are doing right now. And even with gold and oil, yeah, they went up, but they're not going completely crazy. And in fact, uh, what is really happening with the financial markets is that we have seen tremendous rallies in just about everything last year. Um, Gold exploded. Gold stocks exploded. The S&P 500 went up. Bonds went up. The U.S. dollar went up. The only thing that really wasn't bullish was oil and agriculture commodities. Uh, But that might be starting to change. And as we look at the market now, before that news hit the television sets, or your mobile phone device to tell you about it, uh, just about everything was set up for some sort of pause. The RSI on the S&P 500 was overbought. Daily stochastics were above 80. And gold and mining stocks had big rallies in the last two weeks of the year. And when markets get overbought, they tend to pause. They tend to consolidate before they go up higher. And really, that's what's going on right now. If you did not know anything about that news event, and you just looked at the charts of the market, which you can do on stockcharts.com for free, just go type it in, or type in freestockcharts.com. That's the free version of TC2000, which is the software I use to analyze the markets, to look at the sectors, to see what is going on inside the stock market. Um, If you look at those things and had no idea that this news even happened, if you did not watch the television set, if you did not look at the headlines on the phone or on Facebook and only looked at the charts, then what you would think is we're seeing nothing but a normal pause in the stock market and even in the price of gold. And you'd also be thinking to yourself, hey, oil has popped up, back up to resistance. Is it going to go through it for the first time in years? And these are the things that are happening, that are really important for the decisions you make in your investment account or trading um, portfolio, or I should flip it around, your investment portfolio or trading account. Either way, it's what you do with your money. Um, And don't get caught up in the hype on this news. Don't let this news 
drive you to do something uh, without, I mean, it, it should not drive your decisions. Several months ago, when that oil refinery in Saudi Arabia was struck, the price of oil gapped up, and then the next week it fell almost every single day. All the gains were gone, and oil went back down to um, support. And oil stocks, most of them, made new 52-week lows. So if you would have bought on that Saudi oil tanker attack, you would have lost money. That doesn't mean the same thing is going to happen again. What it does mean is do not buy on news. Do not sell on news. Stick to the charts. Stick to the trends. That's what we need to focus on. And if oil is actually going into a bullish trend, which I think is a high probability right now, actually, we will see how it unfolds this month. But if it does, it's not going to do it because of these Middle East news items. It's going to do it as part of... A, a larger commodity bull market cycle because historically what happens with commodities is there's a cycle to them. Gold and silver go up first, other metals go up, and then soft commodities in oil and energy go up. And what we've seen is oil and silver go into new bull markets. It happened obviously last year when oil I mean, when gold went through 1350, which had been the high on gold now for over five years. Um, so that is a sign that, hey, gold and silver are going bonkers. The mining stocks, the GDX went up 38% last year, while the S&P 500 went up 28.7%. Mining stocks smashed the performance of the U.S. stock market. And when that happens and gold goes through such a long-term resistance level like it did last year, that's a sign that, hey, maybe something big is happening. Why is this happening? Because all the other times it's happened, what would happen a year or so later is other commodities would start bull markets too. And all these commodities are also, and gold and silver, are linked to the value of the U.S. dollar. When the U.S. dollar goes up in value, what that does is it makes it cheaper for all of us who live in the United States to buy oil. It makes it cheaper for oil companies to buy oil from overseas. It makes it cheaper to, for Walmart and whoever to import things because the U.S. dollar buys as more purchasing power. But when the U.S. dollar goes down in value, then oil prices become more expensive to import. Everything becomes more expensive to import in the United States. Well, funny thing is, the price of the U.S. dollar has been declining now very slowly um, for the past couple months. And we are likely to be entering a bearish trend in the U.S. dollar. I think that's why gold and silver have gone up uh, ahead of that happening. And what will drive it? A simple thing. Think about the bond market right now. Think about interest rates right now. Last year, the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates three times in panic when the stock market dipped about not even 10%. percent like 8% in, in May. Well, they had a lower rates. They got scared. They did it. And then the market fell anyway in August. And then they got even more scarce. So they had to start another QE operation. They're not calling it that, but that's exactly what it is when the Federal Reserve prints money to buy bonds from banks and mortgages from banks and does these things. That's QE. They're doing it again. And the stock market has been stimulated. The financial markets have been stimulated ever since. We all think about the stock market. I just did it. I said stock market, stock market. But the reality is it's not just the stock market. It's all markets are now being stimulated because the problem with the stock market is very simple. It's overvalued. The S&P 500 cyclical could just be is around 30. Um, and if you go back and look on what has rallied the most inside the stock market since Labor Day, it's been sectors 
that had been horrible laggards for over a year, and now they've rallied and they're overbought uh, at, at this point. Uh, so if the market's going to continue to go up, then it's going to go and look for value. And the market is not just the U.S. stock market. We're now in a global financial system. It's a global market. And there's opportunities outside the United States to find value. An alternative is just simply buying the S&P 500 and Apple and Facebook and something like Aurora Cannabis. Alternatives. Gold and silver mining stocks are one such alternative that are still cheap. But energy stocks have been in bear market territory for several years. Um, and a lot of energy stocks pay 5% dividends. Some of them pay 10% dividends. They're, and they produce real goods in the real world that are used every single day. Oil is used every single day. Natural gas is used every single day. You use it every single day. There's true fundamental value there. And it may be that we're going to approach a situation where the Fed QE pumping in a weaker dollar forces people to say to themselves, hey, the stock market's not gonna crash. I wanna buy something where is their value left in this global economic system? Energy stocks is a place where there's value because they pay high dividends and they've been in a bear market for a long time. If the price momentum on the charts confirms that thesis, we'll see stocks like Exxon make a new high this month. So, the last time there was a big Middle East news was when that Saudi oil facility was hit. Stocks like Exxon gapped up big that day and then fell straight back down. But if this time they hold the recent gains that were generated on Friday and, and no energy stocks don't collapse but consolidate and then break out through the recent highs, that will be a sign that we're making a giant shift change in the trend and it's turning bullish, and that this is going to be a big sector this year. Just like gold and silver were a big sector last year, likely to continue to be this year, but this is what I'm watching right now. And I'm not thinking about buying energy stocks because of the news last week, because the news a couple months ago was even worse for the oil market, but it didn't create a bull market. No, what will create a bull market in energy, in commodities in general, is the commodity cycle. Gold and silver are a suggestion that we may be entering a bullish commodity cycle. A weaker dollar is another suggestion that we, be, that we may be entering a bullish overall commodity cycle. Huge opportunity if that's the case because there are many, many, many commodity stocks we can buy. And... There's also huge opportunity remaining in the gold and silver market. A lot of people are scared because gold went up to 13, uh, 1575 and the mining stocks uh, were down uh, on Monday, scaring people. So I got like a bunch of emails. This is manipulation. Some one person said, another person said, is this a sign of a giant top? Um, well, it's a sign that we're consolidating or pausing. I'm going to talk to Jordan Roy Byrne in a couple of days, try to line up an interview with him to see what his take is on the situation. He runs the website, thedailygold.com. I'm going to try to talk with David Skarika, too, at some point uh, about small cap stocks because there's still massive opportunity in the junior mining sector with small cap stocks. Aftermath Silver shows you what is possible. So if you've been following me, I had Aftermath Silver as a top stock pick in my private power investor group way back in June when it was below 10 cents. I think it was around 6 or 8 cents at the time. 
and it went up to uh, 40 cents uh, just the other week. Now it's consolidating again when something runs up that much um, uh, at such a multiple, it tends to take have to take a breather every now and then. But that I believe the stock will continue to go higher. But that stock and what it did from June till uh, now shows you the profit opportunity that is available in the right small cap stocks. So I'm looking hard, hard, hard to find another one. Um, you know, we can get into and, and, and so forth. But there's a lot of stuff going on in the markets. The headlines, when it, you know, the, it's a serious situation, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, the tensions are, are increasing in the Middle East. Um, the Iraqi parliament uh, passed a, a vote to kick us or, or to tell the United States soldiers to leave Iraq. Uh, and then Trump said he wants to sanction them if they do that. So what are we going to do? Go to war with Iraq too? You know, we fought a war to create a democracy in Iraq, so to speak. And then they vote us out. So then we're going to bomb them or something. Or, it's just all oh, madness. Uh, but that is what the Middle East is. A mad pack, a madhouse. You know, you have Saudi Arabia. You know, you have Saudi uh, intelligence characters who had something to do with 9-11. If you read those 28 pages, you have Iran that is mean. It does terrible things. And, um, you know, has Hezbollah. You have Israel. You have all, you have the mess in Iraq with the Kurds, the Shis, uh, the Sunnis. There's ISIS characters and on and on. All these factions, all these groups, it's, it is a madhouse. So when you get engaged in a madhouse, it is mad. And that is basically what is going on. And the news is crazy um, and gets people worked up uh, and think, oh, this is World War III. No, it's not World War III. It is just a continual madhouse. And that's what the Middle East is when the news turns to it. But that doesn't mean uh, that you should base your trading or investment decisions on news headlines about the Middle East. Because in the long run, they don't have a big impact. Look, the Iraq war did not cause uh, oil prices to soar or the stock market to soar. The stock market went up from 2002 to 2008 because it was in a bull market. The Iraq war did not cause that. When 9-11 happened, the stock market was actually already in a downtrend. It was already in a bear market. And 9-11 didn't really create a bear market because the US, the U.S. stock market was already in one. The new, the geopolitical news really does not have more than a day or two typically impact on the financial markets, at least not uh, in all the time I've ever been trading in them. I mean, I guess it would take a nuclear bomb or something to have a true impact, but you won't be worried about the stock market if that happens. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about the geopolitical news and what you see on your television box when it comes to making trading and investment decisions. Uh, and keep your eye on the charts, keep your eye on the trends, because that's where things are, the profits are found uh, or discovered. And right now, is a very interesting time. Uh, it appears to be for things lining up over the next couple of weeks. So that's what I wanted to talk about with you today. And next time I'll probably have a guest on the show.